Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. How are you enjoying this, this, uh, this series? It has me thinking. And uh, I'm loving it and I'm not loving it. Just being honest. My spirit is loving it. Like, wow, God, you're, you're really revealing yourself to your children. The more we seek, the more he wants us to know about him. It's, it's like I remember when you, pray, uh, when you play hide and seek. Remember you, when you have kids and they're little? You're playing hide and seek. And it's almost like God says, seek me. He wants you to pursue him. But he's not hiding that you cannot find him. Right? We pray when our kids are little. I used to play with my kids and hide and seek. And I, I would be like, there would be one, two, three, and I'm behind them. Like, you know, and so they're, they're easy. It was easy for them to find me. And that's what God wants. And he's, he's not saying, let's play. He says, let's live seeking me. And whenever you, you, you will pursue me, if you ever pursue me, ever, whether you're good, bad, and ugly, he will be there for you. So I believe that this message tonight, today, see, Wednesday night, this morning is going to bless you. So let us go to the word right away. Isaiah 55, verse 7 and 9. And one thing that you need to know as we are continuing this series, and we, we sang it today, we sang the promises of God, and we're saying that there is nothing, nothing, nada, zero, zilch, impossible with God. But there's another part for those who believe. So it's, there's nothing that should be already a given. It should be something that in our DNA, because we're children of God, that we know that with God, everything is possible. He's able to heal. He's able to restore. He's able to change. He's able to do all those things. The question is, is are we able to allow him to do all those things in our lives? I have prayed for a long time for the gift of uh, forgetting, like, the spirit of amnesia come on over your life, right? But not in everything, just some things. I wish that there would be a lineup and I would say like this morning, God is saying that if you had a bad experience, if you had a horrible childhood, if something really traumatic or a crisis really touched you and left you broken, I want you to come up right here. I'm going to lay hands on you and the spirit of amnesia is about to come on you. And you come and someone touches you and you're like, oh, and you're like, no pain, no nothing. You just want to do life and continue to do it. And then something happens and you come up again on the line and they do that again. Wouldn't that be awesome? But life is not like that. Because, yes, we are to let go of our past, but we are to learn from our past. It's not just let it go. Let it go like, you know, our wonderful Elsa that sings let it go. Yes, we do have to let it go, but we have to address whatever took place in our lives in order to move forward. There is no way that we can let go of things if we're still reliving it over and over. You might think you are, but remember, think about Elsa. She spent her entire life. I have already a whole message on Frozen. And it's about my life. But I'm not blunt. Are we there yet? I'd say 55. Uh, okay, let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous men, his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are my ways nor are your ways my ways says the Lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts who knows those verses we learn verse 8 and 9 right I love it I, I continually Say to myself, Virginia, your thoughts are not his thoughts. You know, your way is not your way. And, and I say it and I feel great about it, but I forget to read the prior verse. Where it says, forsake your wicked ways. We're like, I'm not wicked, I'm saved. No, but our thinking doesn't align with God. It is wicked to think that my God is not able to help me. It is wrong to think that he is not able to deal with our problems and our trials and our tribulations. It is wicked to do that. Why? Because we're asking God. I have 
if you come on a Wednesday, you know, I sometimes, little by little, I just spill like the beans. And sometimes they're messy and they smell. And it has nothing to do with gas. I'm just saying, you know, like, life is messy. But I think many times we want to change. We want to think. God says, I want you to think that your thoughts, most of the time our thoughts are not even close to his thoughts. I know that because we have the inner voice. I don't know about you, but I do have an inner voice that sometimes, and it's not the Holy Ghost. And it's not the devil because he can be yapping all the time. No, it is me, the unrenewed me that constantly comes and tells me what God is not able to do in my life. It tells me that if I have this sickness, and this sickness, I, I don't think this is, this is at a stage four. God can only deal with sickness at a stage first. At a, I mean, at st it's stage one or two, but at a four, I don't know if God can do that. I can believe for my family or my marriage if we're a little bit messed up. But if I feel like I'm, we're super messed up, I don't know if God can do that. If I'm believing for my children and, and there many of us or many of here sitting this morning, you have been believing for your family. Maybe your kids are still doing drugs. Maybe they're still addicted. Maybe your family is still broken. And you have come to a place that you still, you believe God, but then you don't believe God. And God is saying, I want you to change. I want you to forsake that thought. Forsake it. Do you know what forsake it means? Abandon it. You, when you leave something, you abandon it forever. If you grew up with issues, which I sure did, a lot of them. I would say I was like the uh, Vogue magazine. So many issues. The September one is like, it weighs 20 pounds. Get one. You could do exercises, one here, one here. Because there's all many issues. So... If you have so many issues and growing up, one of the issues, and I can honestly say that because God's still healing me and he, he will continue to heal me until I get to be with him in person. But one of the issues I had to overcome was the, the abandonment. And when you have an issue of someone abandoning you, someone left you, someone, someone betrayed you, betrayal for me is like, it sets me over the top. Whether it is or the way I see it, it doesn't matter. When you have an issue, you have an issue. So God is saying, abandon it. We are good, so good to think about that God abandons it. He's saying, I am, actually, I never leave you. I'm always with you. I'm going to repeat myself, and I'm going to tell you that I'm not only not going to leave you, I'm not going to abandon you, I'm not going to forsake you, but I want you to forsake your way of thinking. So... If you ever dealt with abandonment issue or somebody rejected you, whatever, it's a stronghold. Or it holds you down. And God is almost saying, that's the way I want you to, I want you to do it, but flip it. I want you to abandon your ways. He says, I want you to forsake your thinking, your thoughts. And then I love what he says. He says, and then he says that he is a God. He says, I will have mercy on you. If you're willing to change the way that you think today, if you're willing to abandon your own agenda, your own thought, the way you feel about yourself, the way you feel about your career, your family, I want you to know that I have so much mercy on you. Mercy, our God is full of mercy. Do you understand? I don't know what you've done, where you've been, but I, you need to know that God is full of mercy and he forgives us. Maybe someone else is not willing to forgive us, but he is. And that's what matters. We're willing to believe my God already forgave me. I don't have to come up with prayers that don't even align with the word of God. And I have said so many, ask and believe God for so many prayers that didn't even align with God because he already did it. Lord, give me strength. You know how many times I pray for God to give me strength? And God is like, well, I already gave it to you. Because this is the joy of the Lord is my strength. No, 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 but I want my own joy. I want to feel it. Lord, that's your joy. That's your deal. I want my own thing. I want to feel it. So I'm waiting to feel this, this strength. But he alone, the name of Jesus, he is our strength. 
So we have strength in us. We just have to, will, to have the will to stand up and to get up and to believe. And believe me, it's not an easy task. But it's a doable yes if we do it with them. So he says abandon. And I believe that this morning God is asking you and me, I want you to abandon, forsake the way that you have been thinking. If you have been stuck in your life, in a place, in a condition, forsake it today. Make a choice today. Let it go in the sense that you're going to say, Lord, this does not align. The way I've been believing for my health, the way I've been believing for my career, my finances, my family, you name it, in blank, you fill it out, does not align with your word. And then I love what he says. He says, for he will abundantly, ab abundantly pardon. Do you understand that? In other words, he's saying, I am an overflowing God who wants to forgive you for everything. My forgiveness is not, it doesn't have measure. There is no measure in the mercy of God. There is no measure in the forgiveness of God. He says, I will abundantly abundantly forgive you I'm going to give you an overflow and you need it you mess up today you come to me and I forgive you and then you feel about good right wait, wait. don't you feel good when you've done something someone forgives you it feels great but sometimes we won't get that sometimes people won't forgive us but God forgives us and then he's going to deal with our hearts but he says I'm going to overflow with my mercy i'm going to overflow with my forgiveness if you just abandon it and you repent do you know that we have to repent on some of our prayers that we have been praying to him do you know that we have to repent to some of our thoughts that we've been having and he says the moment we repent and repentance doesn't mean we cried out have you ever cried out because you did something so bad and you feel bad about it and we weep and we feel like we repented, right? Hey, tears, Lord, did you record this? Are you taking a video from heaven? Because look at these tears. I'm in worship. Look at my hands. Even the greeters have to come give me tissue. Do you see this repentance? Can you see it? Can you acknowledge my repentance? I feel bad about it. And then we get out of the church and we go back to our same way. Well, that's not repentance. That's just feeling bad. That's just, you know, we're, we're weeping. Like the Bible says Saul did that. Like uh, Esau did that. He says that he sought repentance with tears. How many times have you sought repentance? Say, you know, I'm going to change the way that I think. And you feel bad and you cry. And <laughs> all the boogers, even greenies are coming out. And if greens come out, you're like, oh, it's, it's done. I repented. And you even save it because just to remind yourself, you know, put it in your treasure box, take the tissue. These boogers represent that I repented. <laughs> I should show you all my tissue. No, just kidding. I thought I had repented, Lord. He says, those were your boogers. No, repentance means is that maybe you're not even going to cry. Maybe you're actually going to be really crappy inside we say crap in this church Clarksville maybe you're gonna feel actually upset inside because it's not easy to change the way that we've been doing things and thinking what we've been thinking it's not easy someone tells you oh it's so easy they're lying to you they're lying to you Repentance means I'm going to turn around. This is the way that I was going this way. I was thinking this way. This is what I believe. But God is saying repent. I choose today. It's a choice. So I'm going to choose to believe. I'm thinking like God thinks and God thinks that I am awesome. God thinks that I am amazing. He actually thinks that there is so much in me that I can do everything that he has called me to, to do and be. He thinks that I'm able to forgive. He thinks that I'm able to overcome. That's what he thinks. So therefore, forgive me, Lord, for thinking that I cannot, that I want to give up, that this is never going to change. Forgive me, so I'm going this way. And that's what repentance means. That our mind goes the opposite direction. So, with that being said, how are you doing today in your life? 
are your thoughts? Is your lifestyle really reflecting who our God is? And I don't care how long you have been saved. I shouldn't say I don't care. That's the wrong thinking. You see how much I'm thinking? It doesn't matter how long you have been saved. You could be saved for 40 years, 20 years. You know, every Christmas we do that. Who has been saved for 70 years? And someone says, I never seen you in church. You don't even go to church. Oh, I do it by myself. No, you're doing it on your own, and you're reliving the same first year when you got saved, and that's where you're stuck. Have you met people that never want to grow up? Remember the, the, story, the, the song from Toys of Us? For the kids that are like, you guys probably don't even know. You're like, what is that? There's a song that says, I don't want to grow up. Well, it doesn't say it like that, but, you know, it's I don't want to grow up. I want to be a Toys of Us kid for my entire life. And many times that's what we want. I have been saved for this, This actually this December will be 21 years. Now I can do a lot of things because I'm going to be 21. It doesn't matter how long I have been saved. I think my maturity is not a 21. Can I be honest with you? I think my first year, I repeated three years. It's like when you're in school, right? I grew up in a school that in El Salvador, if you, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you fail first grade, you're there at 20. With little kids that are six. And I'm not kidding you. I remember I was in fifth grade and they, I was always bullied. But if you do not bully people, the only bully is the devil. Um. Because in fifth grade, I think I was, I don't know, nine, ten, I don't remember. But my, 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 uh, my classmates, there were like ten of them, they were 26. And I'm not exaggerating. 26 years old. And they were in fifth grade. Repeating the same thing. I was like, save the work. Is the same projects that we do every year. They give you the notes like this is, should have been written this way. This you, They give you, it's like the Bible, open, open test, right? Open exam. And they repeated the same project the same. I was like, they, call, they used to call me names, but, you know, I was very quiet. Be careful with the quiet ones. They're the dangerous ones. They used to call me names, and inside I was like, you idiot bad I was, you know, I'm like, repeating the same project, dude, you should have add a tree to it, they said, add something green, put a tree, save it, and I believe that many of us are reliving, I don't know what year you're stuck, you've been saved 10, 20, I don't know, you choose it, not everybody, I'm not saying that this is for all of us, but some of us repeat the same things over and over, over and over, over and over, because we need to let go of the past, but we're afraid of our past, so we don't confront it. God wants you to confront things. God wants us to be strong and to be brave and to believe and to start thinking the way that he thinks. So I'm going to believe that as a church, we're becoming great thinkers. I am a, a brilliant thinker. That's what I'm speaking over myself. I'm choosing good words now to describe myself because I need to start aligning with how God sees me. I need to start saying, and you need to start saying, I am able to believe. I love your testimony of the Hernandez family because that means that they are living according to the word of God. They're not living according to what's taking place, what has been removed or what has been changed. They have decided this is who we are, this is what we live, and nothing changes us. I always tell people, don't let things change you, especially when it comes to relationships and people do you wrong. I always say, don't let nothing change you. And it's easy me giving that advice to them. But when it happens to me, I want to be changed. I want to be the first one to say, forget you. I don't like you. I don't love you. Goodbye. It's easy to give advice. 
It's easy to say, but this is what we should be doing. The gospel is to live out every word, everything that we learn, everything that we memorize in the, in the word of God. It's not so we can sound great. It's that we can live it and we can pass to another grade and be upgraded continually. Put it this way. I am so growing inside. I love, I, I thrive on on schedules who thrives on schedules here like you love to lay out your day like I love to know what I'm doing at 10 and by by 11 a.m. I should be done with this I love 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 schedules I love structure even if it's chaotic, as long as I'm in control and I can, okay, it's okay. At, at 10 a.m., I'm going to have a breakdown. But at 10.15, <laughs> at 10 15, I'm going to the bathroom, cry by myself, and come out. Okay, I'm good. Why? Because I already created my own schedule. So I thrive on those things. And God never puts me in a thriving environment for me. He puts me up like, no, 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 you're going to go to work with no one. They don't even tell you what to do. You have to figure it out, and I want to know what are we doing. That's the way I am with God. I want you to tell me my time frame. Okay, if I'm going to believe for this project, which is me, I'm the project, right? If I'm going to believe for this, you're going to set me free from this thing. When is the due date? Is this a three-month project? Are we going to be, am I going to be seeing signs in a year? And God is saying, no, 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 it's not about timelines, which you should, if you're very disorganized, get organized. But if you're like super anal, get an anal, right? Be, f be, be, be flexible. Bless are those who are flexible because they will not be broken. This is my own. Virginia 1-7. <laughs> I had to learn it because it was breaking me. But what I'm saying to you is, God wants you to think, you know, sometimes we want change, we want transformation, we want to be free, we're willing for deliverance, for wholeness and healing, but we continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and think the same thing over and over and over. I can tell you that because that's me. Not all the time, but some of the time. And then we get mad at God, like that God is not showing up for me. He's not doing it. No, change, repent today because he already done it. It's you that need to catch up with it. Is that good or is it too strong? You guys come Wednesday, you should know. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you're going to get homework today if you come. There's a, a story that I want to go over it. Because I believe that God will never ask us to do something unless we have been equipped, we have the power to do so, and we do have the Holy Ghost inside of us. He's not just there just to, you know, just to pat us in the back. The Holy Spirit stay instead of Jesus. He says, actually, it's better for me to go to my Father, he said, but I'm not leaving you alone. I'm not going to abandon you there again. I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not enough of forgetting you. Um, actually, the moment I go to the Father, that's the moment the Holy Spirit will come and he will lead you and he will guide you and he will tell you all the things that pertain to our Father and you will seek him and he's going to be with us until we go to be with Jesus. But I don't know about you, but I love, not that I love, but I, 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 I love, I do things a lot by myself he says I'm actually giving you a partner I'm giving you the helper but we want to help the Holy Spirit no he is the helper we're not his helper who's been the Holy Spirit helper only me I was like oh, Holy Spirit let me help you please I come up to the Holy Spirit I come in prayer I give him my list and it's like I'm going to like if you have your boss right Whenever you work up for somebody, stop trying to put your own agenda. Stop trying to, this is the way I want to do it. What? If you work for somebody, that's their vision, and that's what you come under. Isn't that the truth? And if you want to go up in the ladder, you go, come in under that vision of, the, of your company, and this is what we want to do it. So you don't come, at, you, 
you can have ideas, but you're not going to come, okay, your boss says, this is how we're going to do it. This is what we're, we're hoping to reach a million people. And you come, you know what, no, that's too much. I think we should reach 500,000. He's not going to like it. And, but that's the way I feel that we do, to the, we do with the Holy Spirit. We come, and he is the helper. He is a counselor, and he's a comforter. But we want to comfort him, we want to help him, and we want to counsel the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, this is what I, I bring you all these things, and I think this is what we should do with this person. I think you, you should reach out to my husband this way. And to my children, I suggest, may I suggest something? Because I birthed them after, you know, they come out of me. Not you, Holy Spirit. Think about it. It sounds funny, but that's what we do. We already come with an agenda many times in prayer how he should do it. And we wait many times. We live there for a lifetime. Okay, let us go to John 5 and 1. This is the story about this guy. You know, I cannot be mad at the guy because I, I, have, I have found myself many times being this guy. John 5, 1. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever, listen to this, whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now, now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition, highlight, circle, get your crayons out, highlight condition, a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered, answered him, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is still up. But while I'm coming, another, step, an, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise Take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who has cured? Who was cured? It is in the, it is in the Sabbath. It's not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who he was, for Jesus had withdrawn. A multitude being in that place, afterward Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well, sin no more, lest the worst thing comes upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. It says, the original Hebrew, I mean, uh, Greek says that he was an invalid. You know, many times we preach and we said he was paralyzed, but it doesn't really say that he was paralyzed. He has some sort of condition, and he was there for 38 years. Okay, this is where I'm going to want you to pay attention. 38 years. I read this story, and I had a, I had a meeting with, with um, when I read the story, I had a meeting with God. You know, when you... Ask for an audience because you don't agree with what you read in the Bible. I was like, we need to talk about this. So, Jesus, you are going to the pool where you know that all of them that are there are actually in need of healing. If you didn't need healing, there was no place for you in that pool. It says, why does it say that it has five porches? I'm thinking, this is my own thought. I'm thinking they probably started with one porch. That porch, what does it mean? Like it's covered, right? You, you, hey, if I'm going to be here the whole day and I don't know when the angel is coming, I better get some comfort. So someone built one porch. And then people started coming there and they were under the shade. And there, I don't know how many years, but this dude was going there for 38 years. 
So that means someone dropped them off with his bed, his bed. And now there's five porches. So I was like, isn't it like kind of crazy, Jesus, that you're asking this man and you're going actually to ask, hey, do you want to be made well? I was like, duh, a given. Right? It's, Lord, please, are you offending me? He is sick. This man obviously is there because he wants healing or else he wouldn't come to the pool for 38 years. So why are you asking him if he wants to mate well? To bother me. But if you continue to read him, so if he says, do you want to be made well? Do you want your marriage to be restored? Do you want your children to come back to the Lord? Do you want your business to prosper? Do you want to pursue the career that I told you? Do you want, it's a yes or no, right? Yes or no. But that guy has forgotten, even forgotten that he wanted healing. I believe that. He was there for 38 years and misery loves company. He's with this company, all the lame from Jerusalem there. Inside and out. Paralyzed, inside and out. Sick inside and out. So he says, and I want us to, to go through these things that he said. Two factors that I think they're like, it amazes me. The original, the original Greek, in if you read the uh, King James says, it doesn't ask, do you want to be made well? It says, will thou be made whole? It has to do with your will. In other words, he asked him, do you will to be made free? Do you will it? Do you will it? Do you want it? And he didn't have an answer. The first thing that he says, and he goes into like, you know, he goes into his woe is me. Because he's used to that. He's used to talking. I can just imagine this guy talking for 30 years with his friends, and all they talk is about their sickness. All they talk is about that, hey, someone got there before me. And it doesn't say that the angel came every single day. It says, when the angel came. So I don't know. You're just expecting the angel. Like, But I'm thinking, this guy, see, this guy, they were all waiting in the porches. So the porches are around, like one porch there, two, three, three, and everybody's under the shade. Hey, I would have gotten my bed close to the pool. You think, right? I don't know about you, 38 years, but this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to take off my high heels so you're going to see how short I am. Oh, this is so embarrassing. No, I'm just kidding. I'm thinking, right? 38 years. He's just waiting for a man. He's not waiting, first of all, for the angel. And when the angel comes... There's another one who's helping somebody else get in the pool. By the time I'm going, that guy is already healed. Second, for, uh, excuse me, I'm waiting for the water to be in a movement. I was like, 38 years? I wouldn't even go home if I know that tomorrow. Who knows? I'm going to miss it. I don't know. Can he move? I don't know. I'm going to try to do this. I would be like this. You can't move anyways. I'm sure he can move something, right? You know, my pool is over there. That's all I see every day. My chances are like one in a million. So he's just sitting on his comfortable bed. Oh, this is never going to happen. There's no way. I've been coming to this pool 38 years. No one's willing to help me. This is never going to change. And now, I'm worried about the government. I don't even know what Trump is going to do. My family doesn't even care. I'm waiting for somebody to fight for me. You know how many, many times I actually have said that? Can somebody fight for me? I'm in the bed laying down. It would be nice if someone just would fight for me. Pick me up, turn me around. Just like that's the song for Jesus, not for people. But then I thought, but see, he did that for 38 years. But if you start changing your mind, I would have been like, 
like, you know what? I don't know, but I want to move an inch every single day to get to my pool. I'm just going to do it. I don't know. You tell me. Am I getting closer? You know what? God can do it. You know what? No, no, no. All I need is Jesus. All I need is the word of God. All I need to stand in him. I, I actually, I know that he's going to do it. I'm not going to be moved. My family is going to be well. I am going to get my job. I'm not going to die out of this sickness. I'm not going to be here. But we can do things, do you understand? I'm thinking that guy should have dragged himself. At first I was like, poor guy. God said, no, 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 poor. See, you still haven't changed the mentality. You do it. You, if you move an inch, then you move an inch. So now I'm mad. Why? Because you made me lay down. See, you, you made me lay down. And now I have to hold my, put on my shoes. See how tall I am? This makes me 5'4". If I could do handle 5'5", five, five, I would, but I can't. Okay, point number one. Don't be that guy. This is the way he responded. I said, so he became, he gave all the excuses, right? In other words, he said, well, by the time I go, the guys, no one helped me. I have nobody. Woo, the violin going. In other words, he said, it's not my fault that I'm in this condition. And it, it's, isn't it it's so easy to blame others? I love the blame game. I love it. Because then you remove the responsibility from you. Well, no one helped me. You know what? If I would have been born in a different country, I wouldn't be great right now. If my parents would have done this, if they, I would have been raised this way, I wouldn't be the person that I am. If I didn't go to that school, I probably would have more, more opportunities. But no, I grew up in the hood, so therefore, that's why I am where I am. And if you grew up in a fa you know, good family, it's because my parents didn't applaud me. They didn't uh, do this. Whatever, we can come up with a thousand excuses why we don't want to take responsibility. And then we, be, we can't move. The moment we put responsibility on somebody else, you will stay like that for more than 38 years. Or for a lifetime. And it's so popular to get right now. We love to place responsibility on other people. Okay, I'm closing. Give me five minutes, three to five. Point number two. He says, someone always gets it before me. That speaks of the mindset that someone always gets the blessing. How come they, did, they got healed? How come they got a financial breakthrough? How come they were open to open their business? How is it that they are being blessed? Someone is always getting ahead of me, but God is always forgetting me. You need to repent from that thinking. God wants to do it. He wills it. He, it is his will for us to be saved. And salvation doesn't mean just a ticket to heaven. It means restoration. It means, and it, it means financially blessed. Do you know that that's what it means? It means a life that we're able to overcome. So his will is yes. It's not whatever. I love when people say, well, love it, but in a sarcastic way. When people say, well, if God wills it, I'm believing for this. So can we stand for that? Well, I don't know. That's if God wills it. You know why? Because they're not willing to stand. Because it didn't happen, if it doesn't happen, you know, it wasn't me. It was God didn't will it. No, he already willed it and he left his will on this book. We just need to read it and believe that it is. It is the truth of God and it's irrefutable. We don't, we, we don't need to refute our facts. Their facts are the facts and God doesn't want you to pretend that they didn't happen to you. He didn't say, hey, pretend that it never happened. No, he says, no, no, no. Actually, face the facts that took place in your life so you don't carry it around and we don't leave it as a legacy to our kids. Am I getting too upset? I'm getting upset at me, so it's for me. Jesus asked, do you want to be made well? In other words, what's your will in this matter? What 
is your what is your will regarding whatever matter has you stuck in just looking at the pool this is all i see it's all my limitations all my upbringings everything that i didn't have that's all i am so we're waiting we spend the rest of our life waiting for what he was waiting he was waiting for three things he was waiting for an angel which means something divine to happen he was waiting for a movement of water, which means we are waiting for the next, the next move, the next revival. I just need to get to that prayer thing. No, 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 you can do it. That doesn't mean we don't go and we don't seek out those things, but it means that it starts with you. And he was waiting for a man. I mean, sometimes we're waiting for somebody to, to, to make the first step. In order for me to believe that this can change and this can be turned around, I'm waiting for the man or the woman to change. I'm waiting to see some signs and God is saying, no, I'm not. The signs have been given. The water has been moved. The angel, I, you don't need an angel. Although the Bible says that we have legions of angels protecting us. But he says, I have given you my spirit and I'm wanting you to say yes to me. Do you will to be made free today? Yes or no? Do you will to be restored today? Yes or no? No, yeah. We don't even say yet. No, it's because my spouse. Is, how can I believe for restoration? How can I believe for my family, my children? He's not asking you for the details. He already knows them. He's asking you for an answer. He's asking you for you to address your will, and you need to say, yes, I want it. And my last one, which I never understood why, why Jesus says, you know what? Pick up your bed. Rice. He says, rice. Pick up your bed and walk. He says, rise. You know what he means? He means get up. Do you understand? This guy hasn't gotten up in 38 years. And I don't know, but as you get younger, your, your joints like really get like, like glue. Have you ever had those moments where you, you're sitting like crisscross applesauce like when you were 10? And now you're 30, 40, 60, whatever. And you get up and you can't even stand up because your joints are kind of like lost flexibility. So think about this guy. He has been like that for 38 years. And Jesus says, rise, get up, pick up your bed and walk. And he says, immediately the guy picked up his bed and walked. And I'm like, why would he tell him that? God gave him a new vision. He says, your vision has been, this bed has carried you your entire 38 years. Now I'm giving you a new vision. You're going to carry your bed. You carry it. You carry it. I'm giving you a new, a new way of thinking. Pick that thing up because you know what? He could have left it just there. Hey, in case it doesn't happen, tomorrow I wake up and I'm in the same place. I better leave my bed here. So I keep my spot. No, he says, no, pick up your bed, get up and walk. And God is asking you right now, pick up your bed, get up. You need to embrace the pain of a new posture. You need to embrace the pain of a new thinking. Let me tell you, for me to think the way I think, if you can only see my mind, praise God, he's the only one who can see it. Painful. It's painful. It's painful to be stuck. It's painful not to forgive. It's painful. It's painful to walk in shame. It's painful to think that God is not going to do something for you. It is painful. But I'd rather, I have a choice. I'd rather carry the pain of change than I'd rather carry the pain of being stuck. So you know what? Pick up your bed today. Pick up your issue today. Don't let your issue carry you. No, you, I'm going to carry my issue because this issue is going to be, you know, this bed is going to be made to me to glorify God. And wherever I go, I'm going to tell what God did for my life. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below, and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.